morning, dear friends. It's uh, nine o'clock in the morning here in Romania, and uh, still basking in uh, what God did uh, at the service in Machiba Colony last night. The place was full, and uh, there was plenty of um, uh, congregational participation, and uh, the young ladies who are with us uh, sang, and they sang the song about amazing grace. And, you know, it touched my heart. They did an excellent job. But I began to think about the grace of God as a result of that again. The grace of God goes deeper than the deepest sin. There is no sin for which there is not enough grace. Put it another way, there is grace enough for every sin, no matter how profound, no matter how deep. And there's enough grace for however many sins, many or few, the grace of God is sufficient. Well then, what is grace? Well, we say it's the unmerited favor of God, and yes, it is. Uh, I'm 75. I know I don't look it, but I'm 75 years of age now. And when I was younger, I thought, boy, when I reach that age, you know, I'm going to be a super saint. And I find out that rather than be a super saint, I'm almost needing more grace now than I did as a younger man. Because I'm, I'm desperately aware of the frailty, my frailty, of being a human being. Being a man walking on this earth with the emotions and the feelings and <clears throat> the limited understanding and uh, uh, the frustrations as well as the joys, of course. But uh, I'm, I'm aware of how imperfect a human being I am, and how much I need the grace of God. And as they sang, I thought about the word amazing grace. Well, the word amazing grace has, is kind of a descriptive adjective describing the grace. The, the grace of God, when you think about it, you know, nobody deserves it. Not me, not you, not anybody. And and to believe that God in his infinite power, majesty, magnificence, understanding, could call a man like David. Now, David, what should I say? Uh, he was a, a rascal to put it mildly. I mean, he killed and he loved somewhat indiscriminately at times. And uh, and God called him, well, he's been referred to as a man after God's own heart. Come on now. Uh, and then when he repented, you know, he said, against thee and thee only have I said, I don't think so, David. You didn't sin only against God. You sinned against Uriah. You sinned against your position. You sinned against the kingdom of God. You sinned against your family. Uh, it's a nice thought. He sinned and he only sinned against God. But the fact is, it's wider and broader than that. And even that man, God who knows the hearts, called David a man after God's own heart. Well, you know, in spite of all my foibles and frailty and so on, I'd like to think that God sees my heart. My heart, my heart is absolutely 100% for God. Uh, it's me that's my biggest problem, not outside. And, you know, all the, the desire to pray the desire to get along and be quiet in his presence. 
I've tasted that. I've known that. I've been there. I've done that. But you can't turn that on and off like a switch. It's, it's like a lifestyle. It's like something you grow into. Yes, God intervenes at times. Yes, he's, of course he does. But to live that way, you know, I, I know how to live that way. I have lived that way. And all oh, the yearning of my heart. And God sees that part of me. And we have a song. He said, he looked beyond my sin and saw my deepest need. And indeed he does. And so, dear friend, I commend you to the wonderful grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Rather than look within and see uh, failure and insufficiency and inadequacy and things of that nature, join me in looking up and saying, God, your grace is absolutely amazing. And it is. God bless you, and uh, we'll see you real soon. Goodbye to see your friend, Pastor Roy Olson, the missionary, and whatever else I am. Love you, need you, want you. Come to Romania. Bye.